Welcome back to the channel. I'm Reed, and this is Man Cave Guitar Pedal Mania. This is part three of my special attempt to build a Telecaster almost entirely out of parts that I bought from GuitarFetish.com. Now in video one, we learned that everything else looks great, but the body that I bought from them is not good. In video two, I took a Dremel and both cleaned up the inside of the control cavity and sanded out the bottom so that controls would actually fit in it. And uh, I sanded off a forearm cut. It's gentle but perceptible and a bit of a belly carve on this really light wood. I don't know how well that's going to show up. When I first thought of this build, I intended to just do staining and an oil finish. That's really popular now uh, with people who build guitars at home because you don't have to have a spray booth and uh, uh, specialized equipment. However, the way this body is, now this beautiful white poplar actually would have taken color very, very nicely. But all of that went away with these giant knots and again especially this one on the end that there is just there's nothing to be done about that uh, and wood putty does not take stain so i have three knots in this piece of wood one on the front one on the side one on the back it was just going to look horrible if i stained it and likewise uh, because of the size and depth of those knots it's actually not going to look particularly good painted. So I've had to come up with another option. I actually thought about just oiling it and using it exactly as is. I mean, not perfect, but all you're really doing is sealing off the wood so that it doesn't get moisture damage. In this case, uh, from my forearm over the guitar, it's not like I play outdoor festivals or anything, uh, and providing some aesthetic appeal. So, I've decided to try something that I've seen in other internet videos but never attempted myself. I'm going to burn this body. I'm going to take a small uh, acetylene torch and, or propane, don't want to get my flammable gases wrong. Anyway, I'm going to take a small torch and char the surface, sides, and back of it, and then uh, take some heavy steel wool get rid of the worst of the char. And after that, I'm just gonna kind of play it by ear because I've never done this before. So I must say I'm going to be uh, doing this outside on a nice empty cement slab. There's nothing flammable around me. And I've got some asbestos gloves that are designed for holding hot things. So that'll allow me to handle the body after I've torched it. Uh, don't try this at home. <laughs> I cannot stress enough just how dangerous fire is in any uh, any area. And some of the videos that I've seen on YouTube, they don't look to me like they take a lot of safety precautions. I'm gonna be taking all of the precautions that I can. All right, we're gonna to have to move this outside. There is no way I'm setting something on fire in my shop. All right, here I am outside getting ready to torch this body. I have my propane torch and striker, and for safety equipment, I have to keep my hair out of the way, asbestos welding gloves so that I can handle hot objects, and a breath mask. So let's get suited up here. I won't be able to talk once this is on, so. Let's just hope this works.
right, the good news is it works. The bad news is I'm out of propane. I'll come back and do part two tomorrow. Okay, attempt number two. I've upgraded my torch. Let's try this again. Okay, I honestly cannot remember the last time I had that much fun working on a guitar body. So, uh, next step, I'm going to let this cool overnight, and I'll come out tomorrow uh, with some steel wool or a wire brush and get the soot off and see what it looks like after that. Stay tuned. Okay, that was a dangerously large amount of fun. Uh, the body didn't take very long to cool off, so I brought it into the shop, and... <laughs> It's all kind of improvised from here. Uh, I'll do a little bit more research as I'm going through this process. In the meantime, I've got some steel wool and I'm just gonna go over it and get rid of some of this soot. Maybe I'll learn how to go into my video editor and uh, fast forward footage because I can't imagine that watching me do this in real time is going to be particularly interesting. So this type of rapid, intense heating should really just char the surface. It doesn't get in very deep. My idea, at least initially, is I'm going to go, uh, go over it with this steel wool to get rid of this surface char. And then once that's done, I'll go over it uh, very lightly with some probably 400 grit on my orbital sander and see what it looks like after that, and then I'll just take it from there. I mean, never torched a piece of wood like this before. I wasn't sure how it was going to react, but uh, it was really pretty fascinating to watch, I thought. After you give it an initial char, whether it's light or heavy, it does not want to char additionally, so... See, now the wood has kind of a deep, uh, it's not black, it's more of a deep chocolate brown. And that has really brought out some of the figuring. You don't think of poplar as being a figured wood, but poplar has uh, grain just like any other type of wood. And then I have spots like this, which not only wouldn't char, is now raised over 
the rest of the body, if you can see this little area right here, it's actually higher than the rest of the body after heating it. I have no idea what the appropriate level of steel wooling is here. Again, this is all uh, experimentation at this point. Looking good though. All right, now I've got to do the sides and the front. Yeah. Has revealed another non-paintable spot. Junk body. Kind of wish I was doing this live so that people could ask me questions as I was going over it. Might have provided some entertainment for both of you who watched this. While I do the rest of this steel wooling, and then I'll come back and we'll see what the next step looks like. Here we go. Finished for the day. I have gone over the entire body with steel wool and then uh, cleaned it off with mineral spirits. I am now letting it dry and we will see what it looks like tomorrow. But Check that out, that's actually uh, pretty interesting. Somehow I don't hate that not quite so much now. Still hate it, just maybe not quite so much. Notice I could not get the ends of it to char. End grain is so much tougher than other grain. I have that weird spot up at the neck pocket that didn't char at all. I could not get that thing to catch fire, but it will be under the neck plate, so who cares. Now an issue is the fact that it sits up off of the body, but maybe I'll take care of that tomorrow when I sand this. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry overnight. Tomorrow I'm going to come, I'm going to sand it down with 400 grit paper, and then um, may do an oil finish on it after that. I have some tongue oil and we can put a, uh, a nice oil finish on this thing. I wonder if I should put oil on it now. Again, this is all experimental. So, what do you think? Should we put oil on it? You know what, I can't resist. I'm gonna get my, uh, gonna get my drying system set up and then uh, I'm going to put some oil on this before we call it a night. And I'll come back tomorrow and do more oil coats. I'm going to pause this while I get all that set up. If you make bolt-on neck guitars, uh, this amazing little device from Stumac is a lifesaver. acts as a third hand, so you simply uh, attach it to the neck joint. I have a dummy block here, and now that will hold that up and I'll be able to let the oil dry on that. So, let's see what we've got. Hope's 100% pure tongue oil. And a very good cloth. Now, this is not a precise business or a clean business. What I'm doing here is just pouring a generous amount all over. As per the instructions, Apply using a brush or cloth, allow one hour to penetrate, then using an absorbent cloth to remove the excess. So, I want to make sure that I get plenty on. It'll take multiple coats. Okay. Gotta make sure. 
sure to get it around the sides. Yeah, that's what I thought. Right now with the pores open in the wood from the heating, it is just soaking up that oil. Avoid any pools of buildup. Come around the sides. Very generous with it at this point. Again, just want to avoid big pools of oil. Make sure it gets into all that end grain. You can see I got a little soot coming off of there. I suspect that's going to be all right. Now, one cautionary tale when you're using oil like this. Uh, it heats up as it dries, so your rags, you cannot bundle them up and throw them in the garbage. They will catch on fire. Not even joking about that. Uh, lots of videos out there on the interwebs about that. So, you're supposed to lay them out flat, let them dry completely before you dispose of them. Okay. Go. That is. Okay, I'm just going to get any runs that are too big off. Okay. All right. It is just soaking up that tongue oil like a sponge which is what I thought it would do since the pores were all opened up with the heat. So now I'm going to let this sit for an hour. I'm going to come back with a cloth and uh, remove the excess oil. And then I'm going to let it cure overnight. And tomorrow, put on more coats. So, I hope that you have found this interesting. I probably will not film me putting on every oil coat. Um, but if I end up doing something different than planned, um, then I'll film that. But I'll show you what the result looks like in the morning. So this is all still going to be part of video three, so stay tuned. Welcome back. This is the day after I torched the body. I got a little enthusiastic this morning and put on another coat of oil and some shielding paint. So I'm afraid I left out a couple of steps on the video, but that's probably okay. So, hopefully, I'll tilt this so you can see it in some different lighting. Um, I think this looks great. Now, you can see here now the inside of the pickup cavities and the control cavity is black. I painted it with uh, conductive paint. Sticking with my guitar fetish uh, purchasing. This is conductive paint from Guitar Fetish. The science of it is simple enough. You make a Faraday cage around your controls. In reality, I have no idea if that makes any difference, but it is something that I've seen professional luthiers do, and I figure it can't hurt. Uh, this guitar does have that rail humbucker that I'll be using as the bridge pickup. So it's really only the single coil that should have to worry about uh, the outside hum. But you never know. So again, there's the front of it. These not still show up, but... Um, I don't know. 
I said, I, I still hate them, but I don't hate them as much on this dark brownish black color. And I think the body is looking very, very good at this point. So I'm going to let that continue to cure. I'm not getting any soot off of it anymore, but again, since I just put oil on it a little while ago, it needs for that oil to set in, and I really need to stop touching it. So that's part three. Um, I'm kind of torn on whether to do part four as the neck or the electronics, but even though it's not really necessary to do a guitar in linear fashion, I like to start with the body and work my way towards the headstock. That's just always the way I've done it. So I think that I will finish putting the coats of oil on the body. I won't make more videos for that. It's all the same stuff. And then I'll start the next video when I'm ready to install the bridge and the pickups and the wiring. Um, I think that'll be fun. And we can talk a bit about guitar electronics. These videos are aimed at amateur players. So, uh, I'm going to do this as if anybody watching has no idea how guitar electronics function, and we'll talk about potentiometer values and humbuckers versus single coils and all that good kind of stuff while we're working on the wiring. So I think that'll be interesting, um, and I hope that you get something out of it. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. After I build this guitar, I will get back to doing guitar pedal videos, I promise. I have another guitar that I want to build, but I want to wait until I get some feedback on this build series to see if there are things uh, that I can do better in the shop. It's really challenging filming in the shop versus filming uh, in the man cave. So let me know what you think. And if you like this, feel free to subscribe, share it with your friends, ring the bell to be notified when I put up uh, new videos, all that kind of stuff. And I will see you very soon with Part four. I've been Reed. This is Man Cave Guitar Pedal Mania.